Didn't see you there. <sighs> the rope dart, the meteor hammer. What a very interesting and unusual weapons. I always felt like they were so underrepresented in terms of history and sources, something that we could actually point to and say, here's an example of this weapon here. The Wikipedia page for the history is only one sentence long. And it's like these things existed basically. So I wanted to come and change all that. And I've gathered these kind of visual images that are interesting from different periods of history. Hopefully you like it. If so, maybe comment, subscribe, let me know what you think. Like the video and uh, let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, first image, tale as old as time. This is from the 1400s. Two buddies hanging out, showing each other some moves. Um, you might have experienced this yourself. You go over to someone's house, they show you something, you know, you trade moves, whatever. We've probably all done that. Um, pretty cool depiction. Lots of action, lots of dynamic tension in there. Next. Oh, I left the kettle on. Let's see, the next print comes from the same source and it's someone looking at a magical sword, but they have a meter hammer draped behind their back. By the way, if you're worried about names and dates, I'll have a link to all that specific info in the description. Next, we have a print from the 1600s. This one's interesting because it shows someone using a rope weapon while mounted. Um, if you look at those little radial lines, those might indicate this was some sort of claw, like we've seen in other depictions, that could have been used as some sort of criminal capture tool, like a lasso. Chase after someone, snag their clothing, and then uh, pull them off their horse, which is a theme we're going to see later on as well. Um, this one, probably around the 1600s, someone using double chain whips to break up a fight. Interesting. Here we go, early 1600s once again. This is a late Ming encyclopedia, and there's three different rope weapons, and here are those claws I was talking about earlier. In the um, Japanese version of this, there's actually a grappling hook depicted. So there you go. Still early 1600s, we have the meteor hammer uh, depicted on playing cards. Hmm. These are all characters from the Water Margin Chronicles and, uh, or the, I mean, whatever you want to call that saga that's been around in China forever. And we're going to keep seeing a lot of those sort of fictional characters. Yet again, a meteor hammer. By the way, you'll notice it's either going to be meteor hammers most of the time, sometimes the claws. Very rarely is it going to be a rope dart. Um, yeah, these are part of a card game that were played and, uh, different characters, different weapons. So who knows? I guess 400 years ago, Magic of the Gathering geek was playing with these or something. No offense. Okay, still early 1600s, but this is really important. Uh, this is kind of a good reminder that context is key. So you might look at this and think it's, you know, a double-headed meteor hammer or something. And uh, in all actuality, this is something you would throw at a horse's legs to ensnare the horse so that the rider would fall off. So not exactly a meteor hammer. Uh, same thing with these, these kind of claw looking things, you know? And then uh, same thing with this here, you might think it's, um, you know, some sort of like grappling hook, meteor hammer or rope dart weapon, but this is for siege. And supposedly you would you would lower the hook down over the wall if you're the defender, pull up a guy and then drop him to his death. And I had someone I was talking to and they were like, oh, I hate to go that way. But I think I think that story is totally baloney. I don't think that's true. So it's like, okay, you lower a hook down, somehow you catch an enemy soldier with it. I don't even know how that would work. And then, like, let's say you catch them. So then it takes more than one person, probably what, two, three, four people to pull up this guy. Ho, oh, heave, ho, oh, heave. And then finally you all, okay, ready? Go, then you all drop him. And I, let's say he dies. 
how do you then unhook the weapon and start that whole process over anyways, right? And the whole time during this raging battle, those four people could have been going pew, 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 like firing arrows or whatever, just like that. Pew. Um, so I don't think that's how it was written, or I don't think that's the, that's the actual purpose of that weapon, I think. You know, I'm really grateful to this guy 400 years ago for writing an encyclopedia, but when it's like, you know, like literally this thick, you're gonna get a few things wrong. And I think if anything, you would use that to climb up walls. You know, the first few feet are, are chained so that way people can't chop at it. Um, maybe he just got that run wrong or didn't, uh, didn't know the purpose for that weapon. Maybe he's just using his best guess, I don't know. Now, could you, could you use that to attack someone? Sure, but again, historical context, it's for siege scenario. Okay, next, still early 1600s. We have a spiked meteor hammer in uh, this kind of list of weapons in this 12 volume work on military affairs. This book talks about judging terrain, weather, tactics, armor, etc. And most of the time I think we think of the lone rope darter like in a village somewhere doing some sort of village martial art and it's interesting because in this um for once the context is in some sort of military manual now that doesn't mean it was actually employed sometimes people that's my dryer if you can believe it now, it doesn't mean it was actually employed. Sometimes these theorists would just write manuals. Um, like a lot of the stuff Leonardo da Vinci sketched never made it into the battlefield. So, you know, take this one with a grain of salt, but still a cool find, cool reference. Next, still early 1600s. The illustrator here is drawing a siege weapon. That's kind of their main focus, but they do have a... Um, someone with a meteor hammer depicted in this machine. They probably just drew the characters to fill in space and um, they're not even using historically accurate uh, armor. I mean, like they're bare chested. Um, they all have these different kind of stylized weapons. So it's, it's a good reference in that it shows that the weapon was there and existed, but this is more than likely um, someone just doodling to fill in the space. This isn't what an actual Ming Dynasty army or battalion looked like. If you're enjoying this so far, you're more than welcome to stop by my shop and pick up a cool t-shirt or something. Um, that helps me, encourages me to do more of these videos. So thank you very much, I appreciate it. Finally, we get to the 1800s. We have a really early praying mantis manual, which depicts a rope dart. Um, whenever I first saw this, I thought, boy, that really does look very similar to a spearhead, a type of spearhead that I saw in a, I think it was either an encyclopedia or a military manual, but I think it was like a Ming Dynasty encyclopedia. So it's possible people were taking spearheads and just tying them to ropes. You know, that's like the perfect, um, the perfect kind of thing to do. I don't have any proof of that. That'd be kind of a weird thing for someone to write down anyways, but it's possible. The, uh, the similarities are definitely there. Okay, next, this is from the early 1800s as well. Yet again, another water margin story. This is kind of a fictional account, but the illustrator, uh, the Japanese illustrator has illustrated Chinese hero being caught by 13 meteor hammers and claws. Very dynamic piece. All right, another print by the same artist, same era. Uh, it's a really cool martial arts scene. Um, someone being tied up and captured with a rope dart. And I always thought the weapon looked really cool. And uh, I always loved the Japanese art, like these kind of uh, ukiyo-e style prints where they've got this, all this dynamic tension, you know, they've got all this dynamic tension, but it's still orderly in a way. Like there's all this controlled chaos. Um, there'll be like these things lined up in the center, these curves. Kind of we're getting into more art history now, I guess, but still very pretty. Okay, next, early 1800s, we've got this duel between two heroes. 
one of them from Shandong. Interesting. Pretty cool to see a dual scenario being depicted here. Mid 1800s, warrior holding a meteor hammer once again. More meteor hammers, very few rope darts. This is a scroll from maybe around the 1800s. I'm not sure about the date here, but you can see several meteor hammer weapons. Um, even one weapon that I thought was a meteor hammer with a flag, but it turns out I was wrong. This, this particular weapon is not a meteor hammer. It's just kind of like a, a staff thing or the end of a feather um, or like a steel whip. I can't remember exactly what it was, but not a meteor hammer. Okay, then the 1800s, you get to all these depictions of street performers. This is not a fantasy setting. It's not a combat setting. It's just sort of just people performing, um, making a living. You see double-headed meteor hammers. You see, you know, three-section whips, things like that. Here's an interesting depiction of this kind of martial artist who is also practicing medicine. And in the background, you can see a rope dart. Yay, finally some rope darts. And um, a kind of bamboo slider for the rope. Okay, here are some, finally some photographs. Very early 1900s, this is a master with the double meteor hammers. Sorry about the resolution, that's the best picture I could find. If you know of a better resolution picture or any um, images that I might have missed, by the way, link them in the comments. I'd love to see those. Here are some street performers, maybe around 1890, 1910, somewhere in there. And they're performing for a crowd. You can just barely make out a uh, chain whip lying there on the ground, the, the segments. And um, credit to Neil Anderson for first noticing that and writing an article about that. Oh, speaking of credit, um, a huge thank you to Tea Serpent, the Tea Serpent channel. Go check out their stuff. I was originally putting all this stuff together and they came to me with maybe a third of these images that I'm showing you today that I'd just never seen before. They were totally new to me and I was like, oh, thanks so much. So be sure to go over to their channel, check out their videos, thank them for providing these images. They didn't have to do that. So huge shout out to uh, Tea Serpent. Thank you so much for that. Okay, more street performers. This guy's performing here, flourishing, sword swallowing, and there at the bottom, again, you can see his uh, rope dart and also that bamboo slider that we hardly see today in modern performances. And we'll finish up with one of my favorite photos when it comes to chain whips, meteor hammers, or rope darts. This is Wong Hun Fun, praying mantis teacher, holding a chain whip and broadsword at the same time, uh, which you can use jointly. Please note in this video, I've only focused on rope darts, meteor hammers, and chain whips. There are a whole host of these kind of um, combination weapons like flails, uh, staff, staffs with chains on them, all sorts of things. There were fire meteor hammers. These were more used as a festival type thing. In fact, there are still people doing it over in China today, kind of uh, for this would be for like a festival parade, clearing the way, clearing the streets, and kind of creating some flash and like portable fireworks or something. I also found this weird water meteor hammer, which I suppose you fill the bowl with water and then it's kind of your, almost like a toy or a training object. It's kind of your goal to spin the object around and then keep the water inside the bowl. So kind of a weird curiosity. There are other similar concepts in different cultures. Here's an image from an Italian 1400s martial arts manual written by a knight with a rope weapon. Here's another image from a 1700s French small sword manual uh, detailing how to fight against the flail. And of course you have the Kusarigama from Japanese culture. Some images from that as well. All right, that's all I have. Just want to shed a little light on meteor hammers and rope darts, which I feel like are very poorly documented. So I kind of wanted to try and change all that. If you like this video, consider subscribing, uh, comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts, especially if I miss an image. And check out my shop. I've got all sorts of like 
cool t-shirts and playing cards and things of that nature there. So have a look at that as well. That kind of encourages me to keep making these videos. So thanks so much and I'll see you next time.